Hey folks, Dr. Don Ford here again. Let's talk a little bit about the research questions and hypothesis for your paper that's coming up, okay? We've, we've uh, started out, we've talked about uh, chapter one, we identified the problem and issue, we talked about the purpose and scope, and now you need to bring it all home with a one, two, three, however many you need good research questions, and then however many hypotheses that you need. So let's kick back and relax, and I'll try to give you a few examples and let you know how that uh, should work out for your paper. So the research question, starting point of, your of the research question, of the research, I'm sorry, is the research question. You identified your problem issue early, or issue early in the paper. Now you must put it into a question or questions that determine the population, the setting, data to be collected, and time period for the research. The most important requirement for good research is a clear and concise research question. This is what sets up your entire research. You've take, you're going to take what you put in your introduction and you're going to break, break it down into one, two, three, however many you need, small research questions. Okay, where do you begin? A well-cultivated curiosity is the beginning of your research. Um, and where do you find the research question? You find it from observation, maybe new technology, uh, annoyance in the workplace, something that's going on, it bothers you, but you don't know what it is. And backing up to new technology, uh, there's a lot of theory out on, on the uh, acceptance of technological change. We are going through a tremendous amount of technological change in every workplace. And so uh, that's a great place to find a good research question if you're still wondering what you should write about. Experience, things in the past that you uh, come across. Communication, uh, employees, other people talking to you about issues that might be happening in the workplace. I am preventive. Um, I go back to the example I use of Lee Memorial Hospital in, in um, Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, they look at leader member exchange as it relates to organizational commitment and job satisfaction every year. And it um, makes a big difference because they create their training program from the study that they do. A good research question has the character, shows the characteristics uh, that are feasible, you have to have a feasible um, study if you want to uh, make it happen. It's adequate numbers in your control group. There's enough people to study. Um, you have the ex techn uh, technical expertise to do it. You can afford it. It's not gonna cost you a ton of money to get the data or whatever. And it's measurable, it has to be measurable. It has to be interesting. A good research question should be interesting, especially to you, the researcher. It needs to be novel, something that's unique to the field of study that um, you want to look at, but it will help your fellow managers. Uh, and it has to be ethical. It has to be ethical. You can't harm uh, the participants, and, and uh, you can't break confidentiality. If you plan to use human fa factors, human people, human uh, um, that all, then you need to make sure that you go through the IRB at your university because uh, the Institutional Research Board will provide the information you need to make sure that you don't violate any of the uh, confidential or harm to uh, participants guidelines. And it must be relevant. Uh, you could use a descriptive research question such as how do employees rate on quality initiatives? Or you could use an influential research question. So how do quality initiative scores relate to overall company performance? Uh, your choice, okay? Uh, some example research questions is, how will the advent of UAS uh, impact the proven safety and established procedural doctrines that the FAA established for human piloted aviation? Uh, remember, your research question is broad, and then your hypothesis narrows it down. Will the new technologies brought forth by NextGen allow UAS to safely uh, integrate into the NAS? The hypothesis should be developed before data are collected and, and it must be measurable. The hypothesis should include clear variables, uh, what you plan to study in different variables, we'll talk about those later, uh, clear relationships between variables, the population that uh, you plan to study should be included, if at all possible. The statistical uh, design and statistical method should be included. 
and it needs to be measurable. The hypothesis should show a clear statistical approach. It must be measurable. Uh, show examples uh, like X will positively relate to Y, A will positively relate to Y, X will positively relate to M, X will not relate to Y when controlling for A, or A will mediate relationship between X and Y. Um, so all these are, are important elements that uh, you can consider when writing your hypothesis because it needs to be measurable. Some example is there's a statistically significant relationship between the number of flight hours attained and the effects of fatigue felt by the pilot. Uh, you might note that it's not really important that you use the word significant. You see it a lot out there. You can if you want to, but it's not necessarily important. Uh, hypothesis two, there's a statistically significant relationship between the number of flight hours obtained and the effects of flight of fatigue felt by the pilot. So it talks about your variables, uh, flight hours, uh, fatigue, uh, which would be human factors possibly, and um, the relationship between the two. Uh, it, 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 this, this is very measurable, you can see by reading it. Um, then you combine the research questions and hypothesis, uh, and um, I'll go with the second one down here. The risk of uh, hull failure of a spacecraft due to collision can be decreased by at least 25% using a double hull configuration with a foam middle core or honeycomb center core embedded in between the two hulls as opposed to a single hull configuration with similar thickness. Um, and that's um, based off the first research question at the top up there. So this is a good example of research questions and hypothesis. Um, again, bringing it down to more of a management area, uh, to what extent does job satisfaction affect retention among employees in small corporate organizations? And uh, that's a research question. And the hypothesis might be at least 80% of employees who have worked for the company for more than 10 years are more satisfied than those who have worked for less than five years. Another one uh, to go along with an example I've used many times in the course uh, how does the operational tempo of Air Force flight operations in a C-17 affect the level of fatigue and willingness for a pilot to discontinue service if given a chance? That's a broad research question. Broke that down into two hypotheses. There is a statistically significant relationship between the number of flight hours attained and the effects of fatigue. Measurable flight hours, fatigue, both variables. Um, there is a statistically significant relationship between the number of flight hours obtained and the effects of fatigue felt by the pilot. Um, so um, there are um, variables here, operation tempo, human factor consideration, and flight countermeasures. So that's a little bit about the research question and hypothesis, very important. Uh, the hypothesis does not have to be elaborate. Uh, but it needs to be measurable and it needs to, um, someone should be able to look at the hypothesis and it basically tells the story of what you're planning to do with the rest of your research. So kick back, relax. This is Dr. Don Four, and I look, to, look forward to working with you throughout this course.